Hi, I'm Brian, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to configure a role in NetBackup's role-based access control. So let's get started. RBAC roles can be configured either in the NetBackup web UI or by using the APIs. When using the web UI, you will be shown a simplified list of the most common options. However, if you need a more customized configuration, the APIs give you access to all of the options. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on how to use the web UI for role configuration. Check out the API documentation video in this series for more information on how to use the APIs directly. There is one system-defined administrator role that will be created for you automatically. This role has full access to everything by default. Because of that, there is special handling for it in the web UI. For instance, it can't be selected for delete, nor can you change the name or description of it. You can add and remove users from it, but can't modify it in any other way. To simplify creation of some of the most common roles that an organization may want, an RBAC role utility script is available on sort at this URL. This script can create roles using predefined templates for storage, security, and multiple workload administrators. You can also edit the script before running it to fine tune the permissions granted to meet your specific needs. And just as a side note, this script is a good example of how to write a Perl script that calls NetBackup APIs if you need a little inspiration. You can, of course, create your own custom roles to meet the needs of your organization. And now I'm going to show you how to do this in the web UI. Let's say you have a summer intern and you want them to help protect your non-production databases. So let's create a role for that. Here you can see a list of the RBAC roles that already exist in the system. To create a new one, we'll click on the Add button here. The first thing we need to do is give the role a name. Let's say Backup Intern. And for a role description, this is going to be a low privilege role with database access. The next thing we need to do is choose which permissions we're going to grant to this role. So we'll click on the Assign button for selecting permissions. Here you can see the different categories of permissions that we have available to grant. I do want to point out this Learn About Permissions link on the top right here. If you click on this link, you'll be taken to the documentation, and that will give you a refresher on how RBAC permissions work. So the first thing our intern is going to need is permission to the database assets. Now, if this was a role for a full database admin, I could click on All to give them full access to everything. But for our intern, we only need a small subset. So let's say view, restored alternate location, discovery, and protect. Then we can go to protection plans and give them view and subscribe and finish it off by clicking the assign button. So now let's choose which databases they have access to. If this was a full database admin, I could click this checkbox here and give access to everything in the system. But again, this is just for our intern, so let's limit what they can do. We'll click the Add button to choose which ones. And we've got a couple of instances that we want them to work with. We don't want them to touch the production one, so we won't give them access to that. But we can give them access to our two test instances. We'll click Add, and then Assign to close this out. So now let's choose which protection plans they can use. You can see we already have two of them defined in the system. One for production databases with longer retention and faster storage and another for our dev and test databases, shorter retention and slower storage. Obviously, we want to use the dev and test protection plan for our interns. So now the last thing to do is choose which users this role is going to be assigned to. I know that our intern's name is Billy, so we'll add him to the list and click Assign. And that is all that we need for this role. If you watch the RBAC introduction video, you may realize that we've actually done more than just create the role itself. We've actually created an entire access definition. Remember that an access definition is made up of three things. The namespace of the object that we are controlling access to, the operations that are allowed on that namespace, and the role that we are giving that access to. And here's our new backup intern role ready for use. I hope now you'll be ready to start configuring RBAC roles for your environment. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series, and you can always find more information in the NetBackup Web UI Administrator's Guide. Thanks for watching, everyone.